Ahoy everyone, this is David Perry and my continuing series of online interviews with colleagues, artists, and friends from around the world. And today I'm very pleased to have filmmaker Adam Brown, whose film Into the Storm is part of this year's 17th annual International Ocean Film Festival, all online this year and ending tomorrow after a by-demand extension of a week. And also with us in the Zoom room is Ana Blanco, Executive Director of International Ocean Film Festival. And I'm very pleased to have my dear friend and colleague, His Excellency Hernando, the Consul General of Peru. Welcome to you all. Thank you, thank you. So thank you. Adam, has it surprised you, the response to your film? I was, I was watching again just now the, the trailer and reading about it. What an emotional experience it is for many people, this story of a young surfer. Uh, off the Peruvian coast. How did you get the idea and how has it impacted you? Um, so I got the idea, I was out in um, Peru, I was doing a job for Swatch and I was filming the launch of a surf academy out there and I, um, I, I kept hearing about this um, kid called Johnny, Johnny Guerrero, who's a bit of a mystery, a kid from the Barrios who had sort of uh, grown up on the wrong side of the tracks, but had this amazing surfing talent. And um, I kept saying they needed to get him into this surfing academy. Um, he sounded a bit of a mystery, a bit of a ghost almost. And um, then finally, after a few months, we, we sort of saw him surf and he was sort of every bit as good as everyone said. And um, he got involved with the surf academy that I was filming. I realized that there was a, there was a, you know, it was worth pursuing him just for his story alone because he had come from such an, you know, such a hard background and, you know, against the odds, he seemed to have um, developed this surfing talent. And so um, kind of by hook or by crook, I was able to start following his story. And, um, you know, I, I didn't really know what I had at the start. I just knew he, he, his story was compelling. I didn't really know that it would evolve as much as it, it did, you know, so, um, really it was taking a bit of a, a chance um but you know it, it kept on the story kept on developing and I, I kept on wanting to be involved with it so yeah that, that's how it started anyway Anna you know every year there seem to be two programs that stick out that are just popular favorites that's the shark program and the surfing program <laughs> when did you know that you had to have uh Adam's film Into the Storm as part of this year's festival you know, um, I got pretty lucky. I came across the film because it premiered here in the U.S. in the Brooklyn Film Festival, uh, which was a couple months ago, actually. And I was reading about it and to uh, find an 88-minute film about surfing in Peru that was more of a narrative of a person's life um, against the backdrop of surfing really triggered something for me. And when I saw it, I thought, wow, this is such a, an amazing, heartfelt story. And um, I, I wanted the world to see it. You know, um, I'm Peruvian, my dad's from Peru, I live there. And it just resonated so much with me because it's such a heartfelt story. Um, and, and, and a lot of the surfing films we get, yes, they're great surfings and waves and how many waves do we catch and all that good stuff. And they're fantastic. And we have a great surfing community here in the Bay Area. But, um, to, but to have a film that tells such a wonderful story about a human being, the minute I watched it, I knew I had to, the, the first six minutes where he's in the water and he's talking about what it feels to be in the water and how empowering it is. Right then I was hooked and I knew it had to be in the film festival. Her, Hernando, I mean, you know better than most that uh, surfing off of Lima and in Peru is not just a sport, it's, it's a passion. How much is the story of Johnny Guerrero kind of an everyman, an every boy story? Do, do young boys grow up wanting to surf like young boys in, in Argentina and Spain want to play soccer? Well, yes, also surfing is, is, is quite important. First of all, I would like to congratulate uh, Adam on behalf of Peru, <laughs> because it's a very interesting, I, I like it very much, the, the, the film, and many people call me to say that this is not only about surfing, not only about ocean. This is a, a social uh, story, uh, has an anthropological side as well, no? A social sociological side, which is which makes uh, uh, the, the story more complex and even more interesting. So, and it shows, and it shows a reality that is not only in Peru. This is a reality of 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 many countries that are. Uh, uh, 
more or less that have poverty in, in this world, which is, I think, maybe half of this planet. <laughs> and uh, of course, surfing is, uh, David, very important, but not as much as soccer, I think, no? Mm -hmm. And the, but this here, how I I interesting is that an, a, 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 a sport related to the ocean, which is surfing, can save a life, can save uh, somebody, you know, just because of the passion that you're mentioning. Adam, before this film, doing documentaries about the ocean or this part of the world, this, this wasn't part of your, your usual stick. What, what is it about Johnny's story that you found so compelling? I mean, there, there are many elements I found compelling. I mean, I think everyone loves an underdog story, don't they? Um, everyone loves the idea of somebody who, against the odds, achieve success. I think we can all relate to that. I think we're all an underdog in some way in our lives and stuff. Um, yeah, so that, that was one of the, 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 the big things that um, made me sort of really relate to that. I, I really believe in Johnny, like he, he really, really strived so hard and, um, you know, it wasn't easy and, and you know, he, he, he was better than a lot of people who had a lot more advantage than him. Um, so I've totally forgot what the question was, but um, <laughs> in terms of why, why is this late here? I've just done this huge job in Berlin the last two weeks. But, um, you know, I mean, I, I found like, you, you know, Johnny is a way into proving society, certainly um, in, at that level of society was fascinating as well. And like Hernando said, um, yeah, there's a lot of social commentary going on. You know, surfing is just one part of it. You know, for Johnny, that's, that's his way of escaping. And he was lucky that he had that, that escape, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, Johnny, Johnny himself is a complex character. I, I think, you know, for a kid his age, you know, he had a, he had a lot going on and uh, he was really was, you know, quite an enigma that we sort of gradually over time un, un, unlocked as he sort of trusted us more and sort of let us into his life more. Um, and, you know, he's very complex for a kid, you know, he's experienced a lot more than some of us will have experienced, you know, going into our you know, midlife, you know, um, you know, in his sort of mid teens, you know, he'd unfortunately seen a lot of really real hardship and a lot of, you know, been exposed to a lot of things that, um, you know, I, I haven't been. And, um, you know, I mean, that that's interesting to try and understand what the, that effect has on you when your childhood is, you know, taken from you effectively. And, and although that we only sort of went into that so far, um, I think that's the case for a lot of kids in his social position there. Um, childhood ends pretty early. I mean, it, it's common in a lot of, lot of countries where, um, you know, there, there's, um, there, there's poverty and, and, you know, there's the same social issues and stuff. Um, you know, it's, it's not, a, not just a proven thing, I, I guess, is my point, you know, but, uh, you know, the dangers of childhood does end very quickly and you're, you're quite rapidly expected to provide for the family, um, you know, financially. Um, education can get pushed to one side quite quickly. Um, and then, you know, you have all the easy options for how you can provide financially, which are um, unfortunately through crimes or through, sorry, through crime or through, um, you know, sometimes, you know, gang affiliation or whatever. And, um, you know, that that's all there. And, and um, you know, I, I, I really kind of wanted just to show people, I mean, I, mean, I feel there's a, a lot of, you know, lack of understanding about these issues anyway. Um, and, you know, I learned a lot through the process of making this film and I really kind of wanted to share that. And also I think the important thing is that it's hopeful too, you know. Um, there's a lot of negative stories about South America, Latin America, and I thought, well, this is great. This is a really positive story. I always knew that it was gonna have a positive, you know, that, that he was, Johnny was gonna make it somehow. I just had this feeling and, and there were so many positives as well, the positive people pushing him forward the amount of help he got from from so many people and and these people weren't just doing good for him they were doing good for lots of people in their communities and the communities there were so so strong you know much stronger than say the communities i feel like i have in, in my home you know that that's people's support network perhaps is, is their communities and, and they're richer for that and yeah i kind of really wanted to reflect that positivity um 
you know, there's there's so many. I think we sort of do allow ourselves to fall quite easily into some of the cliches about, you know, what we expect life in South America to look like, and um, yeah, it's it's much more nuanced than that. And it was great to have something positive to share, basically. I, I guess. Fernando, how much is the story of Johnny, the story of of young people, young boys uh, from the barrios in uh, in Peru? And especially now with Peru and the whole world going through COVID, but Peru has been especially hard hit in the last few weeks. How much is his story part of what is really going on now in your country? Well, you know, this, this surfing uh, was always a sport related to the middle class. In Peru, in Latin America, you have, it's not like Spain or, or, or England, uh, that you, that is, there is more equality in, in Latin America. You have big social differences, and and also that uh, are more related with 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 with, with ethnicity origin. So usually, the the, the surfing was done by those uh, guys uh, from middle upper middle class families in Lima, in the coast side, because you don't expect somebody from the Andes, you no, know, doing surfing is too far, and and also when they arrive to the coast, they don't have any idea of that, you no. Know? So the thing is that uh, 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 this film shows a, a reality, you no. Know? It's I mean I was just thinking about uh, the the film's Rocky, that is just an invention, but this is a, a real Rocky for. For, for surfing, for instance, no? that thanks to, to his effort, thanks to the support of, of, of his community, uh, he was also receiving bullying from both. He was he receiving bullying from his own uh, friends, the, the, this, this poor area that he comes from, and also he was receiving this bullying from this uh, group of middle class guys who are, and they are not bad, but they see somebody different and they just, uh, uh, do that for 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 maybe if, even for fun, no. But anyhow, he's he, he must has felt attacked for for, for from both sides. Yeah. Anna, wearing both your hat as a Peruviana and also as the executive director of the film festival, what is it about this film that touched you? And what would you like to ask Adam? We're just now less than forty eight hours before the end of this most unusual of international ocean film festivals, which because of COVID has gone virtual and it may mean that this film, the story of Johnny is seen by more people than it would have been if people had had to come to the Cowell Theater in San Francisco. That's true. Um, you know, having gone global for 18 days has really been able to, for us to show the film more than we anticipated to. Um, you know, it's available 24 seven, it's still available. Um, I think having met Adam, and I think this is probably our third or fourth interview, Adam, thank you so much. Um, you know, I think the question for him is to tell, to tell viewers how much the nonprofit organization helped in making uh, Johnny's life better and helping him get what he needed. Uh, there's a local nonprofit in Chorrios that focuses on surfing, and they were, they were integral into the success of the film. And, um, you know, Adam just took his five years to make this film. Um, so it's truly a labor of love. And, um, you know, if it hadn't been for COVID, I think Johnny might have gotten much further in his career. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I know Adam stays in touch with Johnny and, and their friends. And um, what do you think is going to happen with Johnny now, Adam? That would be my question to you. Yeah, so, um, yeah, first of all, your first point, um, Alto Peru are the charity, the NGO that helped me a lot. So um, they were really important because um, you can't sort of just wander into some of these barriers with a camera and start filming um, because you get yourself in a lot of trouble, obviously. So that was one aspect that they, they um, you know, provided that, that safety net for me to be able to film in there safely and to, to help people understand what we were trying to achieve, you know, as well, that um, this was hopefully something positive for the community. Um, they also knew Johnny really well. They'd um, worked with him for a number of years. So that, that was really great. So I had, I had people who understood and cared for Johnny and cared for his social welfare and, and everything. So um, I think that's also important because, you know, they can help me understand where Johnny's coming from. They were a good intermediary between us um, because, you know, they're inevitably making a film like this. There's confusion, especially when I'm, I don't speak Spanish very well and Johnny speaks no English so you know Alta Peru did provide this um, amazing link and um, not only that but they, they do do great work 
you know, they were, they really helped um, grow Johnny as a surfer um, in his career. And um, they're pretty instrumental in sort of helping street kids and um, underprivileged children to, um, you know, find opportunities through sport and art and other cultural activities. Um, so I, yeah, I, I can't recommend them enough, basically. Um, so Johnny's current situation, um, so Johnny, after he did really well in the World Junior Championships, he had a year um, on the professional circuit. So he's competing against men, basically, who, who have been doing this for years and years. And, and he had a very small amount of sponsorship at that point. And he spent it all on his travel to these competitions and entry fees and stuff and, and pretty much came nowhere, as you'd sort of expect. Your first year in the big leagues, um, you know, you're not going to ace it. Plus, you know, he's doing it unsupported again, uh, traveling these places on his own effectively. It's, it's, it's pretty tough, pretty soul-destroying. So, yeah, he, he, he was pretty... Um, yeah, I think he was pretty confused after that first year and trying to figure out what he would do next. Um, the surf industry started to go through a big shake-up as well. Um, they, his brand started dropping a lot of its sponsored surfers, including him. So Johnny ended up then with no sponsorship. Um, and I think he was just sort of trying to figure out what he would do next and kind of hoping this film would help possibly. And then COVID has hit. And um, for a long time, surfers weren't even allowed in the water. Um, they've had quite a strict curfew there as well, I believe. Um, and a lot of people who have done um, low paid uh, casual labor, which would be a, a lot of Johnny's friends and neighbors, um, you know, have been unable to do that work. And these people don't have a big uh, pool of savings to rely on as well. So there's, there's been this big sector of society, which is Johnny's sector of society, which is um, being hugely affected by COVID and the lockdown. And they are really, really struggling at the moment. Um, so Johnny, um, with his small amount of savings, uh, has been providing for his family, for helping his mother, his, his um, half-brother, out and so on. So again, a lot of responsibility and, and you know, again, also his, his surfing career is, is stalling fast, you know, with, with nothing on the horizon. Um, so yeah, it's tricky times for him. He, he's, um, he's fundamentally entrepreneurial and he's been... Um, He's been uh, developing a career as a sort of a, as a rapper, as a singer um, over the last few months. So he's been recording lots of songs. He's found a way to do that. I don't know how, but that he's been able to do during lockdown, which is good. Uh, and, I, you know, I think he really loves doing that. And I think, he, you know, he's back to surfing um, at the moment. But I don't know. I, I think it's a much harder path right now. There's, there is effectively no World Surf League at the moment. There is no championship tour. There's no... There's no events happening, no pathway. Uh, he's got no sponsor, so yeah, it, it's it's a yeah, it's a tough time for him, and I, I, I'm worried about him, obviously. And I, I honestly, at this point, I don't know what the future holds for him. Right. And just our last few moments, Hernando, tell me how important it is, especially this most difficult of years for for all of us, uh, but especially in, in Peru, we've been following the situation there. How important is it to have this film out now? At, at this time, as, as melancholic and somewhat sad as it is. Oh, of course, it's, it's so, so important because it shows, it shows a life, it shows the struggle, it shows an, an example of, 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 of somebody who, 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 who really wants to, to progress. And, 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 you know, the situation, of, of course, in Peru is, is, is very bad now. And, uh, but we, we, are, we are taking all the measures we are taking all the measures and, and, and we are uh, fighting. You know, there is a new prime minister in Peru with a new cabinet who, whose primary target is to, 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 to face this, this, this pandemic. You know? And this famous curve is more or less going down now. Remember that it's winter time in Peru, but of course surfers can, can, can surf all year round in, in Peru. <coughs> And we have 3,000 kilometers in, in beaches in Peru. There's the longest wave, as you know, in, in Trujillo. So I'm sure uh, surfers can, can, can practice. There are no championships. There are no events, official events. But, but they, can, they, can, they can surf as a, as a, as a, as a kind of, 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 of practice no? there. But uh, I, hope, I hope this... Uh, the situation is, is, is going to be, uh, we are going to overcome very soon. Great. Anna, 
any closing thoughts on this film, but also where does the International Ocean Film Festival go from now and into 2021? Uh, you know, David, we're um, hoping to do a monthly subscription for films um, starting in September, if we can. Um, we do have a date for March of 2021. Hopefully we can, um, you know, still have an in-person event, maybe. Um, I've heard of um, Fort Mason trying to do a, uh, a drive-in. They're, they're, they're getting ready to host drive-in, so people can be socially distanced in their cars. So it's a, it's a whole new business model, but lots of opportunities to still showcase the films. Um, and I would like to add uh, one piece that Adam and I have talked about in the past is that if anybody's seen the film and wants to contribute, um, there is a GoFundMe page for Johnny Guerrero. And um, so if anybody wants to help in his sponsorship and his pursuit of surfing, um, and Alto Peru is a uh, registered nonprofit, and I believe it's the Giving Fund. Uh, is that correct, Adam? Is it? Yeah, I, I think so. If you go to altoperu.org, O-R-G, yeah. um, yeah. then you, th there's all the details there, and um, they've, they've, they've sort of done all the um, official paperwork they require. They're registered charity in Peru, yeah. and I believe they've, they've got sort of um, status in, in the U.S. as well. They can receive donations from the U.S. Well, we will make sure after this interview, we will post the link not only to the film and to the film festival, but also to the nonprofit and the GoFundMe page for Johnny. Like so many of us, keeping on, keeping on. But in his case, he needs uh, anyone. He has a harder time than the four of us here or anyone watching this. So good luck to Johnny. Adam, thank you for your work, for your film, for speaking to us and staying up thank so late tonight in Berlin. Ana Blanco. Yeah, yeah, no. Thanks, Fernando. Thank you. And of course, Fernando. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank Go you. Forward.